Now on the line, our good friend, the chairman of the Mississippi GOP, Frank Bordeaux. Afternoon, Frank. Afternoon. Thank you for having me, Gerard. You bet. Thanks so much for coming on. So this, we haven't talked about it yet, but day after the municipal uh, primaries across the state of Mississippi, any uh, news to share there? No, we're, we're still following the uh, results coming in. Uh, I mean, there's still some close races that they're counting ballots. Um, you know, we had a, a, a low turnout, but we we're very proud that we had uh, at least on the Republican side, I think the Republican faithful got out to vote. Um, we didn't see the energy that we saw back in 2020, and we didn't expect to. But uh, I think we had some really good candidates that ran, and I really want to start off by thanking everybody that put their name on a ballot. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of guts and courage to do that. And so uh, whether they won or lost, uh, uh, we're proud and uh, that they put their name out there and, and ran a good race. That's a good point, Frank, and thanks for bringing that up. You know, those that don't run, those of us that aren't a candidate, we, of course, uh, we kind of make it our business to criticize those we don't like and express our grievances there and differences and praise those we do, and that's part of it. That's our system. I accept that. But signing up for that takes a lot of guts, doesn't it? It takes a lot of guts, and, it, you know, it's stressful on, on the individual and their family and their friends. And so, uh, But I think that we're going to see everybody come together after this primary. Uh, we're going to have a few runoffs across the state um, uh, that are going to be of note. And then uh, look forward to June 8th. And that's what the state party is uh, geared up to uh, work hard and on June 8th to get the Republican folks out to vote and support our Republican candidates. Were you pleased with the field overall? It looked like we had a great field. Uh, of Republican candidates. We had an unbelievable field. You know, as, as I traveled the state and I met these folks who run for alderman or council member or, or mayor, I mean, I was very, very impressed with the entire field of folks that we had running and representing us. And, you know, one thing that I often tell folks, we, we like to talk about Washington, D.C. And, and what goes on in Jackson. But a lot of times what goes on in, in city halls across our state uh, affects us uh closer to home, and, and we really need to pay attention to those folks that are representing us and their policies and, and how they uh, spend our money. And so, But I think we have a great slate of folks, and, and I'm looking forward to June 8th. Yeah, and, and that's the way it should be, that uh, government should be closer to the people and the federal government should stay in their swim lane and, and stay out of uh, so much of what happens uh, to us in our daily lives. Unfortunately, they keep crossing... Uh, further and further across that line, and uh, it, to some extent it, it can diminish that which affects us or should be affecting us at the local and state level. But here in Mississippi, I think we're pretty blessed in that regard, and, and I agree with you. I think the field was great, and I look forward to seeing uh, the final results. Tell, tell us what's happening with the GOP in general, what's happening with, with, with respect to the state a GOP, and then what's uh, going on on the national scene? Well, on the state level, I mean, we're very proud. It's kind of, you know, when I have this conversation with folks, it's kind of uh, meshed together as far as Mississippi's concerned. You know, Mississippi's done a great job. Our legislature did a fantastic job over COVID as far as handling the elections. We are the model that, uh, you know, they were using across uh, the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as that's concerned, they, they stood up to pressure to really change our laws, and they didn't do it in Mississippi. And so I was very proud to see. And so at the national level, at the RNC level, they have recognized that, and they're crafting a lot of the uh, legislation that they're proposing across the United States and election laws uh, after Mississippi's uh, success. And so that's something we're very proud of. And the RNC has also been very helpful uh, from the uh, for the Mississippi party as far as contributing uh, resources to us. They're very interested in the condition of our uh, facility in Jackson, our headquarters in Jackson. And so we've, we've formed a very good relationship with the uh, folks at RNC. Our chairwoman has been very supportive of Mississippi, and uh, our co-chair is going to be coming to Mississippi soon, Tommy Hicks, and we're looking forward to that. And so uh, our role right now and has been for the last several months is, you know, obviously we're constantly raising money, but we're collecting data and we're trying to get our data out to Republicans uh, at the local level uh, for them to use in their races. And so 
That has been our goal. We're going to be out in, um, and with a, a strong GOTV presence, get out the vote presence uh, prior to June 8th in uh, several places in the state of Mississippi. And then one of our goals is get on college campuses and really try to recruit um, some younger folks to the party. Man, that would uh, that would be so desperately needed. It appears that uh, to a great extent, the Democrats seem to be making a lot of inroads, and I think a, a, to a great deal that could be attributed to just the uh, the instructors, the professors that they're with every day. And it's no secret that those are primarily uh, Democrats and and more steeped in Democrat and and left leaning policy. And so they often don't get the other side of the story. They don't really get the uh, the full marketplace of ideas, as we say. And so, t- to a great extent, I think it's incumbent upon the party to change that and to uh, and to communicate. No question about it. I, you know, I, I'm looking at my role and the role of the party. You know, we now have all eight statewide. Uh, we have we control the Senate, we control the House. Yeah. Our role is going to be to grow the party and. The way to grow the party, in my mind, and is to uh, go after folks that typically don't vote Republican, and then the younger folks. And so that is our goal, and we're laser focused on it. And, and hopefully, we make some inroads. We are working against, uh, in, in many cases, like you said, faculty at these universities that are promoting ideas that are completely contrary to our ideas, and, and I think most of these students' parents' ideas uh, from Mississippi. Yeah. And so we that's that's tough to combat, but uh, we're going to do the best job we can um, and, and work hard on doing that. Well, appreciate that. I, I think that is uh, is needed. It's it's the next generation and crop of voters, of leaders, of candidates, and uh, we we want them to uh, be exposed to all sides of the political spectrum and the the philosophy of governing. And unfortunately, it seems like. To a great extent, on college campuses, they're only getting one side of the story. So uh, let them make their own mind, but expose them to all the ideas. And that, that ought to be the goal. So I appreciate that. It, it's hard to believe, Frank, but we got the 2022 midterms just around the corner. And with the two-year cycle, uh, it, it just comes about fairly rapidly. We're just kind of digesting and recovering from November. But from a campaign perspective, you got to get going now. And campaigns are all starting, already starting to get in gear and mobilize and candidates are announcing. What What do you know? We've already got lots of news coming out of the southern part of Mississippi, where, where you hail from, with respect to the 4th District. Congressional district. Some candidates have announced, and there's rumors of others, but that's around the corner. It's around the corner, and they, you're right. They have geared up really quick. Uh, it seems like elections start sooner, earlier and earlier um, uh, these days. But uh, you know, down here, there's it's going to be a free for all. Um, obviously, we have uh, the incumbent uh, Stephen Blasso mm-hmm. uh, that I, I believe has all indications of running. But there are several folks. Uh, Sheriff Ezell in Jackson County has already announced. I do believe you'll probably see another, you know, 12, 13 folks jump in there, names that I've heard about already. Wow. And so that's definitely going to be one to watch. Uh, you know, I believe uh, uh, Congressman Kelly and Congressman Guest have, have done a very good job, and they have very strong support, uh, at least from, on the Republican side. So yeah. I don't foresee any big. Um, excitement as far as those are concerned. Um, so I think, in you know, I believe that uh, Congressman Thompson will have some folks that will uh, run against him again on the Republican side, and so we'll see where that goes. But uh, I believe the, the 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 excitement or the energy is going to be uh, down here in South Mississippi. We're going to see uh, 